kind of good. Do I look like a prostitute? You look gorgeous. Okay, I just don't want to look like I'm wearing like five tons of makeup because it feels like I'm wearing five tons of makeup. You look gorgeous. Okay, I trust you. Hi, my wig lovers. This is Heather from SisterWigs.com, and I. Hi, I'm Nigel. <laughs> Yes, this is the fiance. A lot of people have requested that uh, we make a video basically telling you a little bit more about what's going on and that sort of stuff. Um, so that's what this is. So, yeah, did you want to start? Okay, right. Well, my name's Nigel. Um, I was born in uh, Torquay in Devonshire in England. Uh, moved to the States uh, when I was two because my dad got a job with Goodyear uh, and I grew up in Ohio. Um, I spent most of my life there until I was 24 uh, when we moved back to England and I moved back with my parents to look after them because they were getting on in years. That about covers it really. Oh, okay, and you guys know me. I'm Heather. I'm from Sister Wigs. I talk about hair. And this, by the way, is Pure Allure by Raquel Welch in Shadow Shades, Shadow Shades Spice. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say, but I love this color. I love this wig. Figured it'd be a good one to wear. You want to talk about how we met from your perspective? All right. Well, it was it was my last year uh, in the USA, um, and I needed some folding money. So uh, my best friend Chris, uh, who was a manager at uh, the local cinema multiplex, uh, got me a job as a projectionist. Uh, so I spent a few months there. He trained me how to maintain the projectors, thread the projectors. This is back when everything was on celluloid film. Good old days. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I, I was a projectionist for several months. And then I was just puttering along as usual in the, in the projection booth one day and something unusual happened to me. Over to you. Oh gosh, tell the whole thing from your perspective oh. uh, about how we met because mine's a little bit different. Okay, well what happened was this. Um, I was in the booth, as usual, running whatever popcorn uh, blockbuster was going at the time, and uh, the two managers, Chris and Tim, uh, walked in and uh, introduced me to a stunning young 19-year-old uh, woman with uh, legs from here to nowhere else, uh, <laughs> and said I would be training her on uh, running the projectors and so forth. Uh, uh, that's all I remember because seeing her was like getting hit in the face with a 2 by 4 I was pretty much stunned from then on. Uh, and so I started to train her and uh, she caught on very quickly, quicker than anyone else I ever trained. And uh, we got to talking and we had fun, we had laughs, we had a lot in common and uh, we very quickly developed a friendship um, to the point where uh, once her training was finished, we would um, pop in on our off days to see each other when the other person was doing the projection. That kept up for a good year, well, not quite a full year, but uh, until I had to move back to the uh, UK. I'll let you take over from here. From my perspective, thing, okay, Nigel is the person who taught me what the word loquacious means because he was helping me define myself. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, you know, I want to give a little bit more backstory on where I came from because like he met me in a really tumultuous time in my life I've basically been living on my own since I was like right on the cusp of 18 and I was really struggling so I was constantly taking all these different jobs and um, When I met Nigel one thing I wasn't dating at all like I was not dating I was not seeing people like I was intentionally like avoiding it because I had just gotten out of like a really bad breakup And I figured I'm too young for this. I don't know what the hell I'm doing I just need to like not get emotionally involved in people until I figure out who I am and what I want and how to handle myself in relationships basically. So I was I was kind of intentionally taking a break from that stuff. On top of that, like I was always trying to pick up like side muscles, side jobs because I was living on my own and when you're really young and you don't have a degree yet, like all the jobs you can get pay nothing. <laughs> so you need a whole bunch of them to cobble together to make a living. So I was working like 50 hours a week at a TGI Fridays, I was dishwashing, I was busting tables. Tables. I was seating people, I was doing everything you could possibly do at a TGI Fridays aside from bartending because I wasn't old enough. So I was doing that and then, you know, I was basically doing any 
day job again. I worked morning shift at a Starbucks, which starts at like 4.30 in the morning. It's not fun. And I was working at a movie theater, but it wasn't his movie theater. I was working at um, a budget movie theater that was like a sister theater in the same company um, that was down the street. And the people there were really mean to me. They bullied me really badly because I was really chipper and upbeat and I talked a lot. And apparently they don't really like people who are chipper and upbeat and talk a lot. <laughs> and so um, they would do all kinds of heinous things to me until finally I was like, right, I'm gonna transfer to a different theater because I can't I can't keep putting up with this. Like they were sexually harassing me. There was a manager that kept trying to sleep with me. Like, like eh, it's water the bridge now. But like it was it was dramatic and it was not fun. And so, you know, I switched to a different theater that I was hoping would be like a little bit less drama. And so they first started me off, and I told you this was going to be a long story, so they first started me off in box office, which I was not that great at because I got bored senseless because it's so repetitive. And on top of that, like the way that they had the box office set up, you were basically isolated from everybody else, so it was super lonely, I would get really bored. And so I screwed up somebody's change. It wasn't something I was actually um, in a lot of trouble for or anything, but it was something where they were going to let me go because they didn't want me handling money. Because I, they could see on tape it was an honest mistake that you know I wasn't trying to rip somebody off or anything like that. But I just wasn't paying attention because I was bored and I basically just made a mistake on somebody's change, which is laughable now because I handle money all, all the time. Anyhow, they were about to fire me and they pulled me up into the main office and I desperately needed this job because I could barely afford to pay for my apartment. And so uh, the manager, Tim, he mentioned, happened to walk in right before I was about to sign my papers to um, be terminated. I ran over to him when he went to go sit at his little desk and I ran over to him and I got on my hands and knees and said, please give me a job. <laughs> Don't let them fire me, I need money. And you know what? I got the job, I got I got a raise. I didn't get fired, I got a raise. I got a $1.25 an hour raise <laughs> for being audacious. That's Bizarre. right. And so that's when I started working in the box, or in the projection booth that started like a couple days after that whole episode. Mm. And so uh, when I first met Nigel, like the first thing I thought was this guy's really funny because He's really funny. He has a really good sense of humor. Um, he's very charming and it was really easy for me to relax around him. Um, and that was really cool. So like he said, I would come in, like they only had one projectionist on per shift. After training, we never worked a concurrent shift. No. And so I would come visit him during his shifts and he would come visit me during mine. And we would just kind of pal around together and you know, do Pokemon voices and sing to each other and stuff. So it was it was a lot of fun until he had to leave. <laughs>